If it wasn't too long ago that you felt the discomfort of being at home with your family in self-isolation, you should definitely learn about the experiment that simulated a year-long flight to Mars and trapped three Soviet volunteer guys in a space the size of a small room. Fifty years ago on a sunny, pre-November day in Moscow, in a huge building without a single window behind a concrete fence near the Polozhevskia metro station, three guys in matching tracksuits shook hands with people in white robes and disappeared one by one into the cabin of a spaceship, under strict secrecy. Behind them they shut the heavy steel airtight door. And immediately it was sealed. And the start was given. But the ship did not go anywhere, because the start was given to a unique experiment in the course of which the volunteers spent a year inside the hermetic chamber. A long, leap year of 366 days. They lived and worked in conditions of a partially closed circuit of substances and in almost complete isolation from the outside world. In a space the size of Khrushchev's kitchen, Sergei Korolev intended to send a crew to Mars in 1974. According to his calculations, the flight should have lasted approximately one year. In order to find out whether people could withstand such a long trip in cramped conditions, a prototype of the living compartment of the interplanetary spacecraft was built on the territory of the Institute of Medical and Biological Problems. And on November 5, 1967, three volunteers were isolated in it Dr. German Manovtsev, biologist Andrei Bosko and engineer Boris Yulibyshev. They explained to their relatives that they were leaving on a one-year business trip to the North Pole. The project was classified as top secret. The living module of the starship was reminiscent of a room in a Khrushchev apartment just 12 square meters, half of the space was occupied by equipment. The rest of the space had three folding shelves for sleeping, a folding table, a stove, a small bathroom, and an exercise bike. Instead of a shower, a bucket of water was allotted for 10 days. The water was obtained from the urine of cosmonauts there was a closed life support system in the pressure chamber. They drank this water, diluted freeze-dried food with it, cooked the first meals with it. Day and night, the air in the compartment was driven by fans, creating a buzzing sound, like in the subway. In such an environment, the cosmonauts had to live and perform their duties for a year, while being under constant surveillance by video cameras. Manovtsev, appointed commander, was to monitor the health of his colleagues and conduct medical and biological experiments. Boris Yulibyshev was in charge of scientific work, biologist Andrei Bosko worked in the greenhouse that was docked to the pressure chamber a few months later and also kept the spacecraft log, later it became the basis of his book A Year in the Starship. Communication with the outside world was maintained via radio transmissions, the actions of the crew were directed by a mini-center. The scientific purpose of the experiment was to test the life support systems and prepare for flight to another planet. But the most difficult thing for the crew was not everyday life, not emergencies, not the round-the-clock noise of ventilation fans, not the shortage of water and food, but internal conflicts and the struggle for leadership. Mutual dislike sometimes reached the point of hatred. After two months on board the ship Riot Matures, Yuli Baishev and Bosko ignore Herman Manovtsev, not paying attention to the instructions of the commander. Manovtsev had a doubly hard time, he had a pregnant wife left on the mainland, and he was not even sure if he would be informed about the birth of his child. Then the situation changes, Yuli Baishev began to lose weight, so he was allowed to supplement his diet with oil capsules and now he finds himself in the minority the other two crew members become jealous of him. The situation becomes difficult, and at a certain point, the test subjects are ready to attack each other, but it would mean the end of the experiment and the end of the interplanetary mission. Astronauts and polar explorers refer to this state of mind as expeditionary rabies. I remembered the story of a doctor who participated in a polar expedition in Antarctica, they had plenty of water, food was prepared by cooks, they exchanged visits with penguins. 
we were very eager to exchange our comfort and coziness for the hardships they suffered during their stay on the ice continent, wrote Andre Bosco in his diary. The test subjects begin to communicate with each other less and less frequently, each one is locked into his work. But one of the main discoveries of the experiment was that when the organizers further complicate the conditions and introduce an emergency situation, the crew of the capsule unites and mobilizes. This happened when the temperature in the cell was raised to 35 degree, and the oxygen supply was reduced. In addition, the cosmonauts were forbidden to cook hot food and their daily ration of water was halved. Contrary to misgivings, the testers did not quarrel, but began to support each other, introducing the term, healing relationships. We agreed to discuss the subject of the quarrel openly and calmly and to get to the bottom of it, keeping one rule, everyone should speak of his own mistakes, criticism of the other was forbidden, crew members recollected later. On the 121st day Boris Yulibyshev started hallucinating, he thought somebody was walking about his compartment during recreation. This went on for three nights until Boris turned on the light and saw that the ghost was Herman Manovtsev. It turned out that the commander was secretly taking painkillers, trying to hide a purulent cyst behind his ear and an elevated temperature. After all, if he had told this, the experiment would have been stopped. In the end, Dr. Manovtsev performs the surgery himself the drugs no longer help him. But if Yuli Baishev's hallucinations turned out to be far-fetched, nightmarish dreams for the cosmonauts become real nighttime companions. I dreamt that a black huge cat was throwing itself on my chest. I tried to tie it up but it breaks free and lunges at me again. I woke up in a cold sweat, Andre Bosco recounted another dream in his diary. Despite the difficult conditions of the experiment, the difficult routine of the astronauts was sometimes interspersed with joyful events. For example, on February 25, 1968, at midnight, a loud radio link suddenly went on. The management informed the crew commander that his daughter had been born. However, he did not get to see his wife and child until eight months later. The only one among the test crew who manages to have a private life albeit secretly, is Andre Bosco. On January 22, the greenhouse was joined to the hermetic chamber. The crew was very happy because it was an additional living space and a source of natural vitamins so necessary in isolation. It was about this time that the Mission Control Center had a new on-duty operator. Good morning, guys. She woke up the cosmonauts with a pleasant voice. Andre Bosco thought her voice was angelic, and he began to make plans to attract the attention of a girl named Violetta, whom he could see only rarely, through the not fully drawn curtain of the porthole. The cosmonaut in love writes her a note and passes it through the lock of the greenhouse, where he is in charge as a biologist, burying it in the ground. The letter carrier is a familiar engineer from Earth who helps Bosco with his experiments with plants. After an agonizing wait, Andre receives an answer from Violetta, and they begin to correspond. The unspoken correspondence between the biologist and the control center duty officer lasts six months the girl is waiting for her astronaut, as if from a real flight. I am happy, she will say many years later. God has rewarded me so much for something. We have beautiful sons, already doctors of sciences. The wedding was celebrated after the completion of the experiment. The experiment's comrades sat around the table and toasts were sounded, to the conquest of Mars. And Andre Bosco's book Year in the Starship, written together with Violetta Gorodinskia, is still a textbook for organizing space flights. The scientific results of the Soviet experiment are still used today to make recommendations to orbiting crews. They help in resolving conflict situations and organizing cosmonauts' leisure time. When the time to go to Mars comes, the experience of Soviet test pilots, whose names are still little known, will be remembered more than once. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video.
See you in the new video.